which is equal to 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. You could also have, and you're allowed to do this, just multiply the numbers inside, so 4 times 9 is 36, and you are, you're allowed to, to do that. So you can take something like the square root of 2 times square root of 5, and you could say that that equals the square root of 10. You're allowed to do that. You can also do this in reverse. You can say the square root of 10, since 10 is 2 times 5, we can say the square root of 10 is the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. That's also, you're allowed to do that. Now, there is a situation where you would want to do this, and it would be something like the square root of 8. The square root of 8 you can break up into, well, 8 can be broken up into 4 times 2. So the square root of 8 can be turned into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. But the square root of 4, since 4 is a perfect square, is 2. So we say the square root of 8 is 2 times the square root of 2. And that's called a, a simplified radical. What we try to do when we see a, a number, like square root of 32, we try to break 32 up in such a way that uh, we factor it so that one of the factors is a perfect square like 16. And if you can do that, um, you can rewrite this as square root of 16 times 2, square root of 2, which is 4 root 2. Now sometimes you'll see a question and you're not sure about what the best uh, way to factor it is. So what you can do is this. You can sort of split it up as best as you can. Let's say you, you just thought it was 8 times 4 and then you split up that 8 to 4 times 2 and 2 times 2 and then you split that 4 up into 2 times 2. So you could do this method. I, um, you can split it up into 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now when you have two 2's that, that multiplies to give you 4 and the square root of 4 is, is 2 so what you can do, and this is how a shortcut that people learn, is that you can sort of bring these two guys out side the radical. Basically, you're turning it into the square root of 4, which turns into a single 2. And these two 2's also can sort of come out as another 2. But this fifth 2 has to stay inside the radical. And you also get 4 radical 2 that way. So this is a lot. I'm trying to really teach the whole concept. Um, so you can do other questions that are, that are like this. Okay, back to question number 8. 72 is 36 times 2. So I can write it that way. 36 times 2. Uh, square root of 2 is already simplified. This 36, uh, you could sort of bring it out as a, as a 6. Or if you want to do it the sort of long way, it would look like this. Square root of 36 is 6. Now these are like terms, just like 6 dogs minus 3 dogs is 3 dogs. 6 root 2's minus 3 root 2's leaves you with 3 root 2's, which is why the answer to this question is choice 3. Now there is a bit of a shortcut you could use. It's, it's not officially cheating and uh, it's useful to, to be able to use the graphing calculator to help you do questions that you run into trouble on. So let me show you how that works. So I have here my virtual uh, TI calculator and I could actually do this question this way. I put second square root of 72. Uh, don't forget to close your parentheses and then minus uh, 3 times, yes you don't need to write the times, 3 square root 2. Close the parentheses and hit enter and we get this number 4.24 and if you test the answer choices you'll see that 3 times root 2 hold on 3 times root 2 is also 4.24 and if you tested all the answers that's kind of the that's a, that's a little bit cheating but it's not against any rules so it's not cheating so uh, it's a good thing to know to do just in case you run into a question 
you can use the calculator to test the answer choices. Now question 9 is the first question that utilizes uh, some trigonometry. It says you have a triangle ABC, you have a right angle at B, AC is a line segment, length 50, AB is length 48, and BC is length 14, and they'd like to know what ratio represents the tangent of angle A. Well, there are three trigonometric ratios known as sine, cosine, and tangent. And here we have a, uh, a triangle with a size of 14, 48, and 50. And they are asking what is the tangent of angle A. So here's angle A. The, the trigonometric ratios say this, that the sine of an angle in a right triangle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle in a right triangle is the length of the side adjacent to that angle divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is the length of the side opposite that angle over the length of the side adjacent to that angle. So in this triangle, they want to know what tangent of A is. Well, here's angle A up here. Now, the side opposite angle A is the 14. Uh, opposite, there, there are two sides that are kind of attached to the A that have A as one of their endpoints. Those are not the opposite. But CB is the, is the opposite. Now what's funny about adjacent is that it seems like the 50 and the 48 are both adjacent to A. But since the 50 is also the side across from the, from the right angle, it is the hypotenuse, which means that the 48 is the adjacent. And that's why uh, 14 over 48, now, um, uh, that, that can be reduced to 7 over 24, but for this question, it doesn't seem like you need to do that. Let's look at the choice. Okay, as you can see, choice 2 has uh, 14 over 48 as, as the answer. For number 10, we have this question. They have uh, these two lines graphs, and we have shading on, on uh, both lines have shading on one side of them. And the question is, which ordered pair is in the solution set? of the system of linear equation of linear inequalities graph below. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit about this question. You want to take a minute to try it yourself first. Well, uh, a system of equations of, of equalities is something like um, x plus y equals 10, x minus y equals 2. And in a system of uh, system of equations with equals there, uh, there's generally one answer. And that answer could be created by, by graphing. If I were to make the graphs of um, all the numbers, pairs of numbers that add up to 10, and all the pairs of numbers that, that subtract to give me 2, um, in, in this set, I'd have something like 2, 8, and 7, 3, and a bunch of others. Whereas in this one, I'd have like 5 minus 3 is 2, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Well, let's, let's look what happens when I graph both of those on the, same, uh, on the same set of axes. So this line over here represents x plus y equals 10. And this line over here represents x minus y equals 2. And they intersect right here at the point 6 comma 4 which is the answer to this question because 6 plus 4 is 10 and 6 minus 4 is, uh, is 2. Now when you, do, when you graph inequalities something else happens. When you have to graph an inequality like x plus y is greater than 10 well this has a lot more x, y values that, that, that make it true uh, in the sense that uh, like 2 plus 8 equals 10 but 2 plus 9 is greater than 10 and 2 plus 10 is greater than 10 and it seems, although they're both infinite, when we graph all the ones that make it true, the way we do that is we graph x plus y.